Coming from the basement of La Penta, it's WICR. Hello, Iona College. Welcome back to the kickoff of the third annual WICR Radiothon. It's been kind of a tradition. We've been keeping this thing going, and I'm happy to keep this tr- uh, this event, this really cool event going. We have shows running from 9 a.m. in the morning until 12 a.m. at night. That is a lot of commitment, a lot of airtime, but we filled the slots. You'll have a show covering the day every hour, every second. And we're all doing it kind of under a Halloween theme. The target date of this week was kind of to try to get it under that Halloween type theme. We still have Halloween on Friday. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, Like I said... It is currently 8.43, so I figured I'd come on here, give it a little warm-up warm up to the station, uh, and kick off the event for the morning show at 9, and I'll be finishing off the day at, tw- at from 11 to 12 a.m. So my plan, watch the Spurs-Mavs game, come on here with the big three, Armand Madeo, Big Shot Rob, myself. You can see if you're watching on the live screen, uh, stream. I have the new LeBron James Cleveland Cavaliers jersey. Couldn't be more excited to bring this jersey out of the box. I've been waiting all summer to wear this, and uh, it's a great time for sports because you've got basketball right now. The World Series is finishing up. There's football in the year. Every sport is in the, is uh, relevant right now, and it's only going to be like that for about a week or a couple days during this week, so definitely enjoy that time when you can. But uh, I just wanted to give a little sports update before we went along. Obviously, last night, the big head headline you had the Monday night football game the Washington Redskins defeating the Dallas Cowboys 20 to 17 and let's be honest folks nobody saw this one I mean no one would have thought Colt McCoy was going to go into Dallas especially with the way the Cowboys have been playing and come in there and win this game. But you give Colt McCoy and the Redskins a lot of credit in this game. I mean we kept on thinking I mean look the Cowboys are playing really well but what they've done in the past, I mean, that always matters, and you knew something was going to happen eventually, and finally, uh, I guess all of their momentum kind of came up to them, and they finally got handed a loss again, um, and it, uh, to be honest, it was a pretty ugly loss. I mean, the Redskins, to be quite honest, had no business winning that game. I know Tony Roma had his little... Uh, he did come out of the game. Uh, his, he actually had a back uh, contusion, I believe, uh, looking over the injury report now. So it was definitely something to the back. I mean, the one thing you really noticed in that game was Washington did a really good job getting pressure on Roma. I mean, that was probably the the best defensive ski, uh, game plan I've seen against Roma, uh, execution of a game plan. I mean, the defensive... Uh, the defense for Washington did a really nice job pressuring him. The offensive line for the Cowboys had a tough time. Definitely the toughest I've seen so far. Um, but Cole McCoy, one interception. Uh, he didn't do a lot, but the thing that you say that he did well is when they really needed a play on third down or they just needed a really big play, he delivered a lot of those plays. Alfred Morris had a good game running the ball. But Cole McCoy, you give the kid a lot of credit because on a, uh, on a week like that, going into this hostile environment with a team that's been playing so well, I, I think you couldn't have asked for anything better. And you come away with the win in overtime, very impressive for the Washington Redskins, uh, very nice for them. For the Cowboys, I'm not sure. I mean, now you've got question marks with Romo. Should he have even been put back in that game? I mean, it, it's uh, it was nice to see him try to come back and do that, but you just don't know. I mean, I don't know based on the injury. Uh, I'm I, hopefully it's nothing too serious. Doesn't seem like it is at this point. But for the, it, it just makes you think: Who is the best team in the NFC? I mean, can we really identify who is the best team in the NFC? And I don't know if we can. I mean, you look it over. Dallas lost this weekend. The Eagles lost to the Cardinals. The Cardinals are a very good team. I mean, are the Lions? Not, probably not. I mean, defensively, they've been outstanding, but offensively, they've just been a mess. Can't get into rhythm. Are the Packers? Packers got shelled by the Saints the other day, and their defense really is just not playing well. Aaron Rodgers tweaked his hamstring a little bit, so you don't know there. Then you go to the Bears, who we thought at the beginning of the season, they're a complete mess, wildfire. Sell them as fast as you can. You go to the NFC South, and there's not even a team with a winning record in that division. I mean, the Saints are 3-4, and four, and the Panthers are 3-4. and four. They'll play this week on Thursday Night Football, which will be interesting because somebody's going to go to now 4-4, four and four, but that that I guess you would have to say the Saints in that division right now. But even the Saints, I mean, they got their first really win on uh, Sunday night where you're like, okay, 
here's the Saints I've been waiting for, but it took a while. I mean, we're, we're, we've we're been moving along, and it's taken too long. And then finally, you go to the NFC West, and the Seahawks clearly aren't the same team right now. 4-3. and three. The 49ers don't scare anybody at 4-3. and three. The Arizona Cardinals have Carson Palmer, a quarterback, and they're 6-1. and one. So it's really interesting because in the NFC, you really don't have a clear-cut Hands down, these are the best teams in the division. To be honest, I mean, I think we have a pretty good idea. The Cowboys and the Eagles are going to battle it out. But I'm not ready to say either of these teams are the best in the in the NFC. Then you go to the NFC North. We know, again, it's going to be a battle between the Lions and the Packers. But I'm not ready to say either one of those teams is the best either. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is definitely the better quarterback. But I think the Lions have more depth on their team on both sides of the ball. I mean, I, I like the lot. The Lions have already handed the Packers one loss. You look at the Lions as a team, I think defense. Defensively, they're much better than the Packers, and offensively, they have a lot of pieces to get it done. I mean, if they can get into rhythm once Calvin Johnson comes back and gets healthy, I mean, I think you you got to think this Lions team has a legit chance to win this division. And then you go to the NFC South. There's probably the one where you have the hardest time. The Falcons clearly, uh, I think it, in week one, we thought this Falcons team was kind of coming back, but I think that's kind of gone back down. I don't think we believe that anymore. It's You've probably got to say the Saints or the Panthers, but the Panthers defensively are just not the same team anymore. The running game, a lot of injuries there, and then you look at them offensively, and Kelvin Benjamin outside of him Cam Newton's not really having a lot of targets with success getting them the ball and he's struggled a little bit uh, not playing as well as he should be so you don't know there I guess you say the Saints and the NFC West I mean the Seahawks and the Niners can explode at any point but I mean there's been a lot of controversy with both those teams it was more with the 49ers the first couple weeks and now we're kind of segueing into the Seahawks with a lot of controversy you know who doesn't have controversy right now the Arizona Cardinals I mean at the end of the day I just think we still don't talk about this team enough I don't think I'm ready to say they're the best team in the NFC but they just keep on winning I mean to let's be honest they just keep on winning six and one the Arizona Cardinals Bruce Arians I'm I'm just adamant about this guy he's such a good play caller he just gets it his guys buy in they're organized. They come in week in, week out. They never play a game where you feel like they're not prepared. They're not ready. They're never blown out in a game. The only game they've lost to this season was against the Broncos. And that was a relatively close game until Drew Stanton, yeah, Drew Stanton, not even their starting quarterback, got hurt. And they had to put in the rookie, Logan Thomas. Then it got a little out of hand. But, I mean, to be competitive with the Denver Broncos at Denver with with Drew Stanton as your quarterback, you're doing things right. So I know some people are going to call me crazy, but if you made me pick who I think the best team in the NFC is right now, I'm going with the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the Arizona Cardinals have a very tough stretch coming up, but I'm a big, I've been on this team for two years now. I mean, you look at them last year, 10 and 6. They're 6 and 1 this year. Their last two games are against the 49ers and the Seahawks, which is going to be very tough. Very tough, but I think the Cardinals, they're well coached. They have very good personnel. If Carson Palmer can keep doing what he's doing and not turning the ball over, making the plays when he has to, Andre Ellington runs the ball well, I think that this team will continue to be the best in the NFC just the way it is. But definitely very interesting there. Segwaying into the NBA a little bit before we finish off. Tonight is obviously opening night. Yesterday on the Sports Vault, we did a complete uh, tour of every single team. I mean, the top eight in the East, the top eight in the West. But look, tonight, it's not a bad opening night. Obviously, it would be a lot more exciting if we had the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers playing somewhere. But we're going to have to wait until Thursday to see them first take the floor. But tonight, you have the Mavericks and the Spurs. The Spurs will obviously raise the banner. They will get their rings. Very, It's going to be very nice to see. I mean, it's, it's, let's be honest, I mean, it's not the best premier game you could have. I mean, the Spurs, I think basketball enthusiasts enjoy, but I think if you're a casual fan, there's not going to be a lot of flash in this game. I mean, 
the Spurs play fundamentally sound basketball. They pass the ball well. They move the ball well. They play defense. But that doesn't. Re- they're not a highlight real team, so that's not really going to be appealing to the casual fan. The Mavericks as well. I mean, they've got. They're building their team around Dirk, who's 36 now. They bring in some young guys like Chandler Parsons. So they're kind of a, a similar style to the Spurs. They'll move the ball well, play good defense. It should be fun for a basketball fan, but for the for the casual fan. I'm not sure if there's a lot of appeal here. You're definitely going to want to tune in on Thursday. You also have uh, some weird games. I mean, before you have the Magic and the Pelicans, which is kind of a weird game to put on opening night, but Anthony Davis plays. I'm in. And then the late game you have is the Houston Rockets and the LA Lakers. An interesting game. I mean, uh, hopefully we'll be able to see Kobe Bryant. He'll be able to stay healthy this year. But uh, Kobe Bryant, James Harden, it's not a bad matchup. But the thing we all want to find out about is about the Cleveland. Cleveland Cavaliers on Thursday playing their first game of the year at home against the New York Knicks. Then they'll play the next day on Halloween against the Chicago Bulls. So we get back-to-back nights of watching the Cleveland Cavaliers, the new look Cavs, and I just can't be more excited. I mean, I am a fan, but still, I mean, it just doesn't take away from the excitement of this team. I just say it all the time. You think of this roster, um, LeBron James at small forward, Kevin Love at power forward, point guard Kari Irving, shooting guard Dion Waiters, and center you're either going to put in Tristan Thompson or Anderson Vergeau. Not a lot of teams can compete with that. You really can't. I mean, there are good rosters in the NBA. You look at Washington, they've got a good roster. A lot of teams have good front court, uh, just front roster depth, but there's no one who can match with that. The only thing keeping the Cavs away from winning anything right now is ball movement and defense. And I think as you watch them over the course of the season, that's going to get much better. But we're all going to be looking for it. Hopefully it'll go better than the Heat's first couple of weeks. I mean, we remember, the Heat's first couple of weeks were rough, folks. Eight and nine start, then they won 20 games in a row. But that first week, everybody was worrying about it. So I think everybody needs to relax. I mean, if it doesn't go well, I think that the first games, they'll probably split one and one. Uh, probably maybe lose the game to the Bulls. And they probably beat the Knicks on opening night. But you never know. It's going to be very exciting. I mean, I think some people complain about the super teams, but it's good for sports. I mean, especially for the NBA. The NBA, at its core, is a star league. People tune in more to watch one guy than teams. I mean, when you watch the other sports... It's for teams, generally. But for the NBA, it's for players. People want to watch Kevin Durant. People want to watch LeBron James. No one wants to watch the Utah Jazz or the Orlando Magic. There's no star power there. The Heat, the Cavs, if you root for them or if you root against them, there are interests there. And I think that's all you could ask for in it. So very exciting day. Very exciting for WICR with our Radiothon. Like I said, we have Halloween theme shows running all day and night until 12 a.m. in the morning. If you're listening now, you can drop by the station at some point, And you have a chance to be on air and interact with our shows. But it's going to be a long day, a long night. I will be back on from 11 to 12. Probably pop on periodically throughout the day. So stay tuned to the WICR Radiothon. And I will see you later.